Hello and welcome to PKI Well Revised, Common Mistakes Which Lead to Huge Compromise of Identity. If you are joining us live, our speaker is in this Slido discussion now answering your questions. For audio and video issues, please click the technical support button below. I'd now like to turn it over to Mike Jankowski Lorek for the presentation. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Mike Jankowski Lorek, and I'm Director of Consulting and Cybersecurity Expert working for Secure. I'm also a penetration tester and consultant working with Windows and Secure Infrastructure Design all over the world. Today, I will focus on um, pu um, public key infrastructure and common mistakes which l may lead to huge compromise of uh, identity. Let's start with the agenda. First, it will be Cryptography 101, basis of the cryptography and the terms necessary to fully understand attacks and the live hacking demo which I have prepared for you. Next, why we want to have and use the PKI. And we will finish with the intense demo in which you will see how common mistakes in PKI uh, implementation can allow for escalation to domain admins. But let me tell you a story first. A couple of years ago, I was traveling with my beloved wife in USA, California, through the deserts of the Jeshua Tree Park. On the map, there was marked gold mine. And of course, my romantic side kicked in, and I got the vision of beautiful preserved gold mine in Wild Wild West style. So uh, the one that you can see on Instagram or in the Hollywood movies. So um, we decided to go on the off-road, and I was driving a small uh, Jeep on a very rough road. But it was an off-road, it was an adventure. Of course, no one on the desert except us. No cell phone reception, so I was just hoping that the car will not broke down or we will be strangled in the middle of uh, nowhere, absolutely. After around six miles, the road has ended. There was nothing. The, we couldn't see any entrance, any um, just the hill or whatever it was. And there was one thing. There was a hole in the ground looking very similar to this, what you can see right now. Of course, I could check before going on this journey if my vision of gold mine is really what there will be. But as you say, all that glitters is not a gold. The same is with PKI. It should be used for increasing the security, but if we don't uh, check it, if we do not secure it properly, then it can be used for attacking your infrastructure and compromising completely your infrastructure and data security. And let's see how it can be done. First, let's go with the, a little bit of cryptography, just a little bit to uh, fully understand what we are talking here about. So the basic concepts, encoding. The purpose of encoding is to transform the data so that it can be properly consumed by the different types of the system. The goal is not to keep the information um, secret, but rather to ensure that it's able to be consumed properly. Examples, ASCII encoding, Unicode, URL encoding, Base64. Encryption is, on the other hand, is maintaining the data confidentiality and requiring the use of the key uh, for encryption and for decryption. So to transfer it from the clear text to the cipher text. Uh, we are focusing here um, on only permitting selected users or selected entities to see the content of the messages. And for example, we have advanced encryption standard or RSA. Advanced encryption standard is using the symmetric key cryptography, which is really uh, using the same key for encryption and for the decryption. But when we are using RSA, we have a pair of the keys. So the key number one and the second one are generated at the same time and if you see only one of those keys, you cannot create or regenerate the second one. So when we do the encryption with the first key, the second one is used for the decryption. But we can do this other way around, like use the second key for encryption, and then the first one will be used for the decryption of it. And of course, we can make one of those keys public. Then, of course, if you choose, have chosen one of the, those keys as a public one, definitely use the second one as a very, very private one and store it securely. Other concepts are hashing, 
when we have, um, in general, this purpose of hashing is to ensure integrity of the messages so we can easily check if the message was changed and if someone is uh, making some mischiefs on our network, maybe. And we are using the, uh, for example, MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256 for this. Uh, important is that the hashing is one-way function. So from the message, we can get the hash, but not other way around. It's impossible. And finally, the signing. It's quite important concept, especially for the authentication. Uh, it's proving who is the author of the message. Okay? How we do that? We calculate the hash and we encrypt it with something that we only know. So the private key is used for that. Signature algorithm, for example, is SHA-256 RSA. So, what is the major problem of any secure communication or uh, signatures? It's how we associate the keys with the identity of the user, machine, service, etc. So this is when the certificates and the PKI is coming for the rescue. Public key certificate or also digital certificate or identity certificate is an electronic document used to prove the ownership of the public key. The certificates include information about the key, about the identity, and also has a digital signature of an entity that has verified the content of the certificate. And it's called issuer. So if the signature is valid and we trust the issuer of the certificate, then we can know that the subject and the public key are matching. In cryptography, we use uh, X509 standard for defining, defining the format of the public key uh, and uh, identity. One of the open properties of this um, X509 standard is extended key usage. It tells us for which purposes we can use this certificate. So for example, uh, server security or email protection, code signing, and we should not be able to use the certificate which is used for one purpose or issued for one purpose to use it with application that need another one. Very important thing is the certificate signing request, CSR. It's a message sent uh, from an applicant to request for the digital certificate. And of course, inside of it, we have a subject. And as well, for what purpose we want to use this certificate. Also, there is a public key, and this is signed by the certification authority to issue the digital certificate. So CA acts as a trusted third party trusted by both the client and the server. And if it's trusted by both, we can ensure that the key belongs really to the subject. And based on this, we can perform authentication or the secure communication. Certification Authority is publishing the CPS, the legal document that describes how the Certification Authority manages the certificates and issues. Based on this, we are really trusting or not trusting different uh, uh, certification authorities. We also need to remember that there are certificate revocation lists and online certificate status protocol, which allows us to invalidate the certificate if it's, uh, because, uh, the private key become compromised, for example. Also, there is a certificate transparency, which is the system collecting all information about all the logs that we have um, issued the certificates to be able to browse through those logs and to find if someone is using malicious certificates or is requesting for the malicious certificates. We must remember that there are trust lists. And one of the most important trust lists for the root CAs is the trusted root certification authority list. Every system that is, for example, Windows Server or Windows 10 contains the predefined list of the certification authorities that Microsoft trusts. Different applications use different lists. For example, for Mozilla Firefox, we'll be using a completely different list. Uh, of course, it's uh, containing as well many uh, common uh, trusted root CAs. But if something is added to the list, we are trusting all the certificates, which will be chaining back to the top one. So the one that we are trusting. Because if we trust someone, then the, another person trusts another person, then we are building this chain. Uh, when we have two organizations, you need to remember that they can as well exchange the certificates and create this trust between two different organizations, even if they are just a private companies not related to the publicly trusted root CAs. So how they can do that? 
The simplest solution would be to just take a certificate of a second component and put it as a trusted root CA. Okay, but then we trust absolutely every certificate which means that they can issue a certificate that will be uh, having the subject as an email of your CEO, which then can be used for encrypting and signing the emails that you will trust. That would be problematic. So instead of that, we can use the cross certification and issue special kind of certificate, which will restrict to only the names that the other company has. So for example, DNS suffix or email suffix, everything what is uh, uh, after the at sign in the email. This is extremely important not to trust not uh, the root CA if we are really not trusting all the certificates that will be issued by them. So why we are really using the PKA? What is the benefits of it? The basic is the server authentication. And this is absolutely all the time when we are using it. For example, right now, you are on the web page going through the HTTPS, and there is a TLS that is presenting as well the certificate. Client authentication, then we are using our certificate to prove to the web server who we are, or for example, authenticate to some applications. A little bit more advanced solutions are smart card logon or Windows Hello for Business. And more and more popular is getting the secure email. It's quite simple how to use it, but it's getting more and more popular, especially during the remote working to prove who is the sender of the email and as well uh, to trust it. So it's time for a little bit of life hacking. Let me turn off the camera and let's start the presentation. In this demo, I will focus on how misconfigured certificate templates can be used to bypass absolutely any security on your network because we can start and impersonate um, any absolutely any account on the network by simply requesting and receiving specially crafted certificate so let's set up the stage first here and um, I'm currently signing to one of my Windows Server machines. Uh, it's not a domain controller. It's uh, not a certification authority. And I'm using just a user who is a local administrator of that computer. But to perform those kind of attacks, there is no need for uh, being a local administrator. Uh, of course, it depends on the type of the template that I want to use. Because in this demo, I will be attacking through the certificate templates that are assigned to the uh, servers, or for example, a web server. So let's see who am I. This time it's a secure Bob, and if I see the groups, um, let's see what are the group membership. This is the built-in administrators. Uh, I'm belonging as well to the users because this is my local administrator for this host. Let's try if I can just simply do the dear and let's say DC01C$. Of course, DC01 is my domain controller. If I use the NSLOOKUP and uh, go with the CQ.LAB, uh, this is absolutely the, one of the IP addresses 10, 10, 10, 10, which is, of course, assigned to my DC01 as a name. So um, another command which I will try to do is net use and let's say mount as Z drive the DC01 C dollar to show you that it's requesting for the username and password because my user currently is not a domain admin he cannot get to the domain controller. So stopping this clearing the screen. Uh, let's see what are the certificates that currently I have. So let's set MGR, MSC, the console for certificates for current user. That's important, this is the current user. In the personal refresh, there is absolutely no certificates right now here. If I try to request for any kind of certificate, let's see what is available for me, and uh, there is a classic uh, user template. This is multi-purpose certificate uh, template. It's an encrypting file system, secure email and client authentication. Uh, let's enroll it and uh, maybe I will show you that even if I provide something in the subject name like uh, let's say common name, test and uh, add and maybe the uh, user principal name like admin at cq.lab still it will be ignored and if I enroll it, 
I'm getting the certificate, but really the certificate is for the Bob Builder, so it should too. And in the details, in the subject alternate name, um, subject alternate name, there is of course only Bob, because this is properly configured template, so no problem with it. Okay, so I cannot use this certificate to abuse um, my identity, my servers, and to use it for different purposes in the um, identity. So, how about switching to the computer certificates? I'm a local administrator, so definitely I have possibility to use with the cert um, LM MSC, and after approving this, <coughs> I should get possibility to get to my certificates. Certificates, and right now see there are a couple of sites on this web server already issued from my DC. I will request a new certificate, and this time uh, let's go through the templates for the web server. And as you can see, I have two different certificate templates. One is a CQ web, and the second one is CQ web uh, bed. Of course, this one will be the one that is allowing me to abuse the certificates. What are the difference between those two? If I look in the details, in the first one, you see that in the CQ web, there is only a server authentication. If I look at the CQ web, uh, there will be server and the client authentication. For multiple purposes, uh, for uh, different um, client sites, I see that the certificates are issued like this. Because maybe the web server is used as well as a client for the, some APIs or there is some kind of other binding which requires the client authentication. But in most cases, there is no need for using the client authentication here. If I see that I can supply the uh, request and the supply the name inside of the um, request and there is a client authentication for me, this is almost for sure possibility for abusing the uh, request. So let's use it, let's use the bad one because there is a client authentication and go with the properties and choose one of those. So common name, let's stick to the pattern site free secure dot lab uh, adding it, DNS name the same, so I'm keeping it simple so anyone who will be just s watching what kind of certificate I'm requesting it looks absolutely nice, but also I will sub add alternative name which will be admin at secure.lab ok, adding it there ok, so this is the second option and that's all which I need right at this moment, click OK and now it's time for enroll there are two options. One is that it's automatically approved like this, so I already got the certificate. Or the second one that it will be pending for the certificate manager for the further approval. But even if it's for the further approval, if this meets the requirements and there is no strict procedure on revising the request, there is good chance that someone will approve this kind of certificate sooner or later, of course. But prefer uh, probably a little bit earlier. So this one is uh, the site free and if we look into the certificate it looks that like it's everything good with it but in the subject alternate name you will find out that there is a additional request and additional name admin at secure.lab. So let's try to use this certificate. Okay? First of all it's a local computer so I cannot do too much as this user Bob. Okay, maybe it's possible for me to export the certificate. I can go to the export and if it's a key storage provider I will be able to export it even if this option is disabled by default by the certificate template then remember that it's protected by using data protection API so really I can export the key even if the option is not available. This time I will export it and let's go next. I will save it with the password, so this will be my password one, and save it to the file. Let's go with fake certificate. This is uh, fake certificate number five this time. Okay, next, finish, and that's all. Now I can remove it from the sites even, so I don't need it. Okay, delete it perfectly. And the next option is to just simply import this certificate into my uh, current user. So, if I just simply import it, okay, next, 
and choose the certificate from the uh, list here. Okay, so this was PFX, so I should change it like that. And this is FC5. Next, and type the password. There will be no difference absolutely for me. I still will not be able to use the certificate to sign in, or I will not be able, for example, to uh, just simply um, use it for mapping anything from uh, the system. For example, if I use run as, uh, there is one of the options that is use smart card. Okay, but to use smart card, I need to have a smart card. Remember, right now my certificate is not import to the smart card, it's import to the key storage provider. So I'm removing this certificate again, and this time I will prepare a smart card. Let's find out if I have a smart card available for me at this moment. So uh, going here and the properties, oh maybe, uh, yes, properties, this one, and device manager. Going to look if there are any smart cards for me. Right now I do not have any smart card, but I have a TPM module. So if I have a TPM module, I can use a, a TPM, TPM virtual smart card manager. And if I display everything here, there is a very simple command that I can use to generate new smart card for me. But this option will be not possible if I'm in the terminal services session. So what I need to do right now, I need to go to the basic session on my Hyper-V configuration to be able to use the smart cards. Unfortunately, it will be not in the full screen mode anymore. So signing in as Bob, be the builder, and executing absolutely the same command again. This time the smart card is generated. This is the virtual smart card, which is bound to the TPM device. Okay. The next thing which I need to perform, uh, of course I can show that there is a smart card this time already available, there is a smart card per reader. I need to import the um, certificate to my smart card. So to do that I will use CertUtil with the Microsoft Base Smart Card Crypto Provider and I will be importing the PFX file from the CDG and this was my first certificate number 5, PFX. It's asking, uh, oh, I need to be elevated, so let's do this again with the command prompt that will be elevated. CMD, again, as administrator, as simple as pasting it here and hitting enter. So I need to provide the password for the PFX. This is the pin, so it's 1234567 8. This is the default pin, and right away I will have access to newly imported certificate. So right now it will be visible absolutely in the same way in the certificates. So refresh here and there is this site free certificate. Let's test if I can right now do a couple of things. So try to use the DIR again and this is DC01 C$. Dollar. Okay, it's denied. So maybe I can use the net use again for the same. Net use and say this is Z, DC01, C$, dollar, and of course um, enter. This time again not available for me, but if I use the same command, this time with smart card, it's going to read the smart cards, and because I have a certificate with additional um, subject alternate name, which has extended key usage set to the provide the pin 7 8 and command completed successfully so right now if I go to the Z drive and use the dir it's a DC if I go to the Windows NTDS you can find out that there is of course the NTDS dot database but of course this is only a possibility for me to mount the drive so maybe instead of doing that I will just simply run something as administrator. So now I can just simply unmount the uh, Z drive, okay, and use run as user admin at secure.lab because this is what is in subject alternate name, and then of course um, smart card, smart card, and provide that I want to start the CMD. So I try to start CMD using the smart card for authentication and run it as admin. 
Why I do this this way? Because remember, my certificate does not have a um, uh, smart card logon as extended key user, so I cannot use it in Windows 10 to sign in using this as a smart card. But I can still use a run as command, which require me only to have um, the certificate with client authentication. Funny fact is that I'm running it as site-free-secure.lab, but if you type who am I, I'm secure admin. Who am I slash all, and you will see that I'm definitely a domain admin right now. So maybe I'm able to just simply use, again, dear on the DC01, and for example, C$ this time without any troubles here. Remember, I'm currently a domain admin. So K list, let's see what is there. And as you can see, there are Kerberos tickets, which I can as well steal and reuse it on any uh, other system as a pass the ticket. So remember that you need to secure the templates because right now the template allows me for two things at the same time. When I'm requesting the certificates, there is of course, not for this user, but for the uh, computer, so cert LM MSC, there is a possibility for me to request for um, any kind of request. So a subject name can be provided by me. And additionally, there is a client authentication in it. No certificate manager approval required. This is really, really bad configuration. It looks like very big misconfiguration at the same time that uh, no one should create this one, but it's quite common misconfiguration that we see on multiple cases at our client sites. So that was the um, one of the hacking solution which we can perform to actually get uh, to our uh, infrastructure. And uh, this is not the only one that we really can perform. So uh, the common mistakes which uh, you should uh, investigate. Definitely, if you are using a uh, software key storage provider, you can export the certificates and the private keys uh, from the storage. Uh, Multi-purpose certificates, they are arising another kind of problem for which purpose they were issued. If you combine uh, email uh, signing with uh, encryption of the, the drive, then you need to have a possibility to recover the files and, of course, uh, losing the of for accountability. CSRs, automatic approval, definitely not a good idea. Your certificate managers should take closer look into the certificates, especially those which are high value. Um, template permissions, domain admins, literally only domain admins should be able to do that. Of course, if you delegate the permissions to the templates, uh, remember that we can change uh, the settings and do exactly this kind of attack. So watch out who has access to the templates and to which templates with what kind of permissions. And the unconstrained cross certification, which allows me to just issue from one um, uh, PKI the certificate, which is really about your entities, about your um, users, and uh, this will be still trusted certificate. Okay, in this demo, I was not using any of our custom tools, but we have developed more than 200 tools and scripts used for different attacks and demos. Some of them we are sharing on our site. So if you are interested in any of them, as uh, well, those which our team is using on other RSA sessions, visit the link and freely download them and use them and play around. See, so Secure is not only doing presentations and writing at those, even that we are quite good at this. Uh, but our main job is knowledge sharing. All around the world with online and offline um, custom trainings related to the security, and of course, a lot of consulting services. Together with one of the best custom penetration testing and red teaming exercises that you can get, like at all. So. Thank you for joining me for this session. And remember to verify if your PKI solution does not have simple misconfigurations, uh, mistakes which may lead to huge compromise of your identity solution.